looks like I am a minute late. I'm so sorry. I was trying to let you see my flowers I've been trying to grow. And on the bottom there, I call it an elephant ear flower. And then I have some that are hanging with a shepherd's hook. Hey, Cheryl. And I was trying to show my flowers. I don't know if you can see them, but what I wanted to talk about today is they were like sheep. And it talks about how everywhere Jesus went, people were like sheep. And they, um, they maybe needed some guidance, but hi, Paula Parrish, how are you? So I wanted to touch base on if you feel like everything you do is perfect, then how do we perceive improvement? If you feel like everything you're doing is exactly right, how do you ever get any better at that? So I want to touch base on just one little thing. There's only one perfect person who's ever lived on this earth, and that is Jesus. And fortunately for us, he loved us enough that he decided to die for us and then rise again three days later. So if we accept him and decide that we want Jesus to be the rule of our lives and believe that he came to earth and died for us. And I always say, if you accept something into your heart, then it's, it's good as, as done. Because once you have that inward change about how God has changed your life, you will see things outwardly changing, like the patience level you have or the way you try to do things. So you'll notice tonight, I don't look exactly perfect, but that's okay. I did it on purpose because perfection is something we can never achieve. Even if we do something exactly right one time, we may not ever be able to do it exactly right again. Think about this. You go and you, um, little girls might have a makeup party or a slumber party or do their nails, or little boys might go to the ball field and maybe they catch that fly ball or they hit a home run or my goodness, they hit a grand slam and that might win the game. Something my mom used to tell me is, even if you are up to bat and you make the last out because you struck out, you didn't make all three outs all those innings. You're just accountable for that one time. I didn't win or lose the game by striking out. It was a whole team effort. So when we look at how God looks at us, it's a team effort with what He does for us and we do for him. He is willing to give us all the tools that we can possibly put in our tool belt or all the vehicles that we can possibly learn to drive, but it doesn't do us any good if we don't utilize what he's given us or if we don't have the car keys to drive that vehicle. So perfection is something that can never be forever on our side, but we can always strive to do the right thing and to be prayerful over God what, wants, what God wants to do in our lives and how we can represent him in a godly fashion. We might do things right, but we're never perfect. So just remember that. It's okay to make a mistake, but it's okay to own that mistake too, right? So just because we made a mistake doesn't mean it stops there. We need to improve on that. So my flowers are nowhere near perfect. So um, I was overwatering them, underwatering them. Some water, some don't, oh my goodness. If you are the person who loves a flower garden, I need to talk to you because I am struggling, but that's okay. I, I'm trying something new this year, trying to get my flowers going, and I'm really excited about it. So tonight it says they were like sheep, and I wanted to show that with you. And thank you, Cheryl, so much for joining. And wherever he went, he healed people of every sort of disease and illness. He felt great pity for the crowds that came. They were like sheep without a shepherd. So if you're a farmer, or back in, um, when we read sometimes in the Old Testament or the New Testament, it talks about people who are, <laughs> I got this here, people who are out in the fields tending to their sheep. The reason you have to have a shepherd is because sheep need to be led. And actually I got to go on a trip and see, it was a sheep herding expedition. And it was a dog, and the dog didn't bark or growl or anything. What he did is, he had one owner that trained him, and that dog heard that one owner's voice. So he got around all these sheep. They were all over the field, and he would just start take off running. He would go in great big circles, then he'd get closer and closer. And before you know it, 
those sheep looks like a cotton ball. It was like they were all spread out and then they were all together and they just started going wherever they were supposed to go. And so I asked the person who trained them and I said, how, how do those sheep know to do that? I mean, why doesn't, how do you keep the dog from barking or growling or any of that stuff? And she said, oh, we work with these animals. I think she said a year, a year and a half. So they recognize just the owner's voice and they are trained not to bark or growl because the sheep think it's a wolf. And if it barks or growls, then they know it's not. So the sheep are heeded to, or learned to heed that animal and follow where it's taking them. And that reminds me of how Jesus loves us. He just tries to reel us in and takes us wherever we need to go, but we have to listen to his voice, right? So that's something really cool to think about. So, hi, Michelle Reedy. So glad you're on tonight. Jesus was born in Israel because he was a Jew. He loves all people, but he first came to his own people, the Jews. To God, they are like a flock of sheep. Jesus came to be their shepherd and bring them back to God. The leaders of Israel at the time only took care of themselves. God's sheep had no shepherd. Long before Jesus came, a man named Ezekiel asked them, Shouldn't you shepherds take care of God's people? You have all you need, but you don't take care of the flock. You haven't strengthened the weak, healed the sick, or bandaged the injured. You haven't brought back the stray sheep or searched for the lost. You've ruled Israel harshly and brutally. They were scattered because there was no shepherd. Then they became food for wild animals. My sheep wandered all over the mountains and on every hill. They were scattered over the whole earth and no one searched or looked for them. This is why Jesus came, he said. I have come to seek and save those who are lost. He is the good shepherd who loves all people. Dear God, thank you for being the good shepherd. When you think about sheep and how they need somebody to lead and guide them, think about if you did everything to perfection, would you learn anything? Or would you feel like you already knew everything? So our goal is to strive to do the right thing and to heed what God is saying and to pray for His, for His wisdom and His guidance. So when we are doing something or if we're maybe a big decision, do um, um, is there a science fair project due coming up or is there something that maybe we need to take care of? How do we, how do we pray about it? How do we do it right? That's when we ask God, please give us wisdom and help us to know how to do the right thing. And if someone tells us we're doing something wrong, to not be offended by that, but to learn by that. Because God puts people in our lives for us to learn from them. So make sure who your friends are are good people, that they're godly people, and that they have your best interests at heart. Your mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, somebody along the way, somewhere, is praying for you. And guess what? I am praying for you. I want you to know that God loves you very much. Perfection is not something we can achieve on our own or ever. There's only been one perfect person, but he is going to be the shepherd of us, his sheep. That is all I have for you tonight. So let me ask you, if you think this was a pretty cool story and you learned just a little something, I want to say thank you for joining in tonight and to being a part of the Bold Movement's nightly reading. And we are on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. If you have an email question or a concern that maybe you don't want everybody to see that you'd just like to ask privately, email us. That's what we're here for. Info, I-N-F-O, at theboldmovement.com. I want you to know you are making a difference in somebody's life somewhere, and you may never, ever know it until that person comes to you and tells you, you know, when you were a little kid in second grade or in kindergarten, I noticed something different about you. You always did the right thing, and you always asked for the right um, permission and you always answered the right questions and you always listened to your parents and had and I feel like God had favor in you don't be surprised if when you walk the right right path and you follow in God's footsteps 
that somebody comes to you somewhere along the way and says, I noticed you, I was watching you, and you made a difference in my life. Just like you guys are making a difference in my life tonight. Thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your evening. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. I will see you tomorrow night. So go out and be, what is it? Cheryl's already typed it, so you got a little bit of a cheat. Go out and be bold. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. All right? Bye.